All right, this is number three from the 2007 Calc AB exam. Um, and it's actually one of the lowest scoring questions in kind of the history of the AP exam. And uh, it's not really clear why, and you'll see as we go through. All right, well, we have a table of values, and we're told that f and g are differentiable, and then they define this weird function for us, h of x, which is f of g of x minus 6. And the first question is to... Uh, show that there's some value of r between 1 and 3 where h of r is negative 5. Um, and this really sounds like an intermediate value theorem question to me. Um, so since it sounds like an intermediate value theorem question, uh, I want to show that the function is continuous, and then I want to show that it's less than that value and then greater than that value. Um, so let's figure out the values at the bounds, because that's usually what you do. That's going to be f of g of 1 minus 6. Um, which is, now look up g of 1 in the table, and you see it's 2, so that's f of 2, and then minus 6, and then look up f of 2 in the table, and it's 9, so 9 minus 6, which is 3. Now we're going to do the same thing for h of 3. That's going to be f of g of 3, and then minus 6, which is f of, look up g of 3 in the table, and it's 4, so f of 4, and then minus 6, and then look up f of 4 in the table, it's negative 1, so negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7. Um, so negative 7 is less than negative 5, and 3 is greater than negative 5. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that um, h is um, differentiable, which means that it must be continuous, because uh, differentiability implies continuity. Um, then I know that h of 3 is less than negative 5, which is less than h of 1. Um, so by the intermediate value theorem, I am guaranteed that h of r equals negative 5 for some value of r between 1 and 3. All right, so that's intermediate value theorem. Uh, the next question is actually just your classic mean value theorem question. Um, we have to explain why the derivative equals some particular value. Um, and I put the table in here again, but it turns out that we already calculated the values that we need. So we're trying to show that h prime of c equals negative 5 for some c in between 1 and 3. So to use the mean value theorem, I need um, h to be differentiable. So it's differentiable on the closed interval, and therefore continuous on the open interval, and so the mean value theorem applies. So by the mean value theorem, h prime of c equals h of 3 minus h of 1 over 3 minus 1. I already calculated h of 3 and h of 1 in part a, so I'm just going to copy those values. So h of 3 was negative 7 and h of 1 was 3, or 2, and then this works out to negative 5, as you would kind of expect based on the question. Um, and this was guaranteed for some value of c between 1 and 3 by the mean value theorem, and that's all there is to that. Uh, part c is a second fundamental theorem question, so we're given this weird accumulation function, and we're asked to find the derivative at a certain value. So w prime of x is going to be f, evaluated at the upper bound times the derivative of the upper bound. All right, so if I find w prime of 3, that's going to be f of um, g of 3 times g prime of 3. And f of, look up g of 3 in the table, you get 4. So that's f of 4 times g prime, look up g prime of 3 in the table, and it's 2. So times 2, look up f of 4 in the table, you get negative 1. So negative 1 times 2, and that's negative 2. And that's all there is to that. And then there's one final part, which is about the um, inverse of g. So we want the tangent line to the inverse. So for this, you got to know a couple of things. Um, so if f and g are inverses, so I say this to myself every single time I have to do an inverse question. So if f and g are inverses, and the point a, b is on f, then I know two things are true. So the first thing is that the point BA is on G, and the second thing is that the slope of G, so G prime of B, is 1 over F prime of A. The other thing you always have to know is that the X value they give you in these problems is an X value for the inverse. So um, we're looking for the tangent line to the inverse at X equals 2 on the inverse function. So let's see what we can do. Um, we look up 2 in the column for g of x, right? So um, if, if x equals 2 
on the inverse function. That means it's a y value on the original function, so we find 2 in the table. Um, that corresponds to x equals 1. So we know the point 2, 1 is on the inverse. And then we find the slope that goes along with that row, and it's 5. Um, so the slope of g of x at x equals 1 is 5, which means the slope of g prime at x equals 2 is 1 over, uh, the slope of g inverse, rather, at x equals 2 is 1 over g prime of 1, or 1 fifth. And then we just write the tangent line. So I'm going to use point slope form. And I'm not going to simplify because I never simplify it. And there you go. All right, that's the whole problem. Hope you found this helpful and good luck.